Today we're going to be uh, solving absolute value equations. It's still the same process. If you look at the three steps at the top, it's all the same. Um, B still has to be greater than zero. We're still trying to isolate. We still set up our two equations, solving them both and checking for extraneous solutions. What's going to be different is if you look on the right side of each equation, our B value is now going to be algebraic. Okay, but when you get your answer and you plug it in, you still have to make sure that it's a positive number. If it comes out to be negative, then you can go ahead and reject. So in number one, the absolute value of expression is isolated, so we're going to set up our two equations. So 3x plus 6 stays the same for 1, so equals a positive x, and then we negate it for the other becomes a negative x. In solving both, I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from each side. 6 equals negative 2x divided by negative 2. We get x equals negative 3. Subtract 3x here. 6 is equal to negative 4x. Divide by negative 4, and x equals reduced. You can leave it negative 4, 6, but if you reduce it, it's negative 3 halves. And if we go back, it says to check. You really don't need to do a full check here by substitution, because if you take a look, this represents your x. If you plug in a negative 3, again, this is absolute value, you're going to get a solution that doesn't check. Because the absolute value can never be equal to a negative. So you can reject that one. Again, plug this in. This would be equal to a negative 3 halves. We can't have that. So therefore, when we reject them both, the answer is no solution. In number 2, it says to solve and check. The absolute value expression is isolated, so we're going to make our two equations and then solve them both. So 3x plus 2 equals... 3x plus 2 equals. Now, the, for the algebraic expression, it stays the same for 1, just like x remain the same, because that's the positive. And then if you negate this, so if I negate 4x plus 5, it switches the sign of both terms. So equals negative 4x minus 5. Once you get to that point, you can go ahead and solve both. So I'm going to bring the 3x over. So I have a positive number of x's. Subtract the 5. And I get x equals negative 3. I guess I shouldn't box until I know for sure that it checks. And then here, I'm going to add the 4x to give me a positive number of x's. We get 7x plus 2 equals negative 5. Subtract the 2. 7x equals negative 7, divide by 7, and x equals negative 1. Now to check both of those, I usually set up a t-chart, but since I don't have room, this will be the check for x equals negative 3. So substituting 3 times negative 3 plus 2 is the absolute value of that equal to 4 times negative 3 plus 5. We do the operations inside first, so negative 9 plus 2 gives us the absolute value of negative 7, which is 7. On the right side, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7, which does not check. So we reject the negative 3, and let's see if x equals negative 1 works. So is the absolute value of 3 times negative 1 plus 2 equal to 4 times negative 1 plus 5. On this side, we get negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. On this side, we have negative 3 plus 2, which gives us the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. So that checks, and our only solution, therefore, is x equals negative 1.